On day one, I spawned in as a kangaroo. Hoo ha, I'm a tiny little kangaroo. Look how bouncy I am. I was so busy bouncing, I barely noticed the little Tasmanian devil that started to attack me. Back away. I swung my fist and punched that little baby right out of here. Hot dang, I'm tiny, but I can pack a punch. I took a look around for some trees to start my adventures when a much bigger Tasmanian devil came out. Uh-oh, looks like I made the dad angry. I gotta hop on out of here. I ran away as the Tasmanian devil looked angrily on. If I could find my kangaroo family, I knew I would be safe. As I hopped around, I could see I was all alone. So I I made myself a simple shelter to spend the night. Maybe tomorrow I can find my family. On day two, I headed back over to where I spawned in and saw the Tasmanian devil was nowhere to be seen. Looks like the coast is clear. Let's get that wood. I started punching the trees and had soon gathered a good amount of wood. Using the wood, I managed to make myself some wood tools that would come in handy later. Turned out that later was now, as a snake came out of nowhere and attacked. Where did you come from? I swung at the snake, hitting him right in the face. It didn't take long and I was able to take him out. Not bad, my guy. I looked over and saw an emu was watching. Why don't you come over here and let me get a sample? of that power. You want to fight me? Just box. Let's go. I didn't see the harm in a little training, so I started swinging. The emu was a good fighter and had clearly been well trained. After a bit of sparring, he stopped. Yeah, you've got some real talent, but you've got lots to learn. Let me introduce you to my trainer. He'll have you becoming a real fighter in no time. I agreed and followed him. As we walked, he introduced himself as Ernie. We soon arrived at an old rundown gym. As we entered inside, I soon saw who his trainer was. It was an old turtle. Master Balboa, I ran into this kangaroo, and I think he's got some real promise. The old turtle looked me up and down. Hmm. I don't see much here. I won't train him. Oh, come on. Maybe he can help with the... Silence? Okay, he can stay here. Be ready for training at sunrise. I don't know why this Master Balboa was so hard on me, but I agreed to be trained and went to bed in the gym. On day three, I was woken up by Master Balboa. Already sleeping in, I see. Hmm, beggars can't be choosers. Up, up, you will start by cleaning this place. I took a look around the gym and saw that there was a lot of work to be done. There was a lot of stuff that needed to be cleared out, and there was a lot of room for improvement. I wonder how long it had been since someone had cleaned this place up. Once I had done a fair bit of cleaning, I decided that I didn't want to be sleeping on the floor anymore, so I made myself a small room for me to sleep in. It wasn't anything fancy, just a place to rest. After I had finished, Master Balboa came up to me. Too good to sleep on the floor, are you? Every student sleeps on the floor and earns his dues. I don't know why you think you are different. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I just thought it might be a little more comfortable. One can never do the uncomfortable from a place of comfort. You do well to remember that strength is forged in the trials of fire. Man, this guy was always speaking in weird sayings. Just then, a mountain tortoise appeared. Uh-oh, this guy looks like he wants to hurt me. Let's get out of here. No, Zozo, this is your fire. Fight him and forge the strength you need to win. Uh, okay, I'll give it a shot. The tortoise was tough. He was really hitting hard and I wasn't feeling confident I could win. That's when I could hear Master Balboa shouting at me. A tortoise's strength doesn't come from the hardness of his shell, but from the will of his heart. What? Don't hit the shell, hit his soft spots. Oh, right. I focused on the tortoise's neck and started landing some good hits. In no time, he was taken out. After he had disappeared, I felt some adrenaline coursing through me and I leveled up into an even stronger kangaroo. I have even more hearts now too. Ernie was really impressed and shouted his encouragement to me. I thought I even saw Master Balboa crack a smile. Just maybe. On days four to five, I found myself facing off with Ernie. My skills had improved, but my emu friend really knew how to fight. As we fought, I asked him some questions. So have you seen any other kangaroos around? I can't be the only one. Ernie didn't say anything, but I could tell he had something to say. Master Balboa spoke up instead. There are many animals who have trained here. One of these animals was a legendary kangaroo. He was one of the greatest fighters to pass through this gym. Even he, among many others, was unable to defeat the buff bear. All have failed. I hate that buff bear. I've seen too many of my friends fall to him. Nothing will stop me from destroying him. Patience, Ernie. Rage is a cancer that can blind even the clearest of vision. Ernie calmed down, but I could still sense his frustration beneath the surface. I felt his anger though. That buff bear was going to pay. On day six to eight, I woke up with an idea. If we're really going to take down this buff bear, we're gonna need better training facilities. I think I can help with that. After I had gathered some stone, I was suddenly attacked by the Tasmanian devil for my first day. Joke was on him though. I was even stronger now. Let's see how you like this. I swung my fist and really let him have it. I don't think he was expecting me to be so strong and I was able to knock him out in no time. Someone bit off more than they could chew. I grabbed a little more sand, then headed back to the base. Now that I had a bunch of materials, I used them to start improvements to the gym. I felt like I had a strong purpose and a clear mind. Master Balboa would be proud of that. After a lot of sweat and hard work, all the improvements were complete, at least for now. On days 9 to 10, Ernie and I were out for a jog. The problem was, Ernie was so much faster than me, he had to keep waiting for me to catch up. He didn't seem to mind though. <laughs> What a slowpoke. I looked over and saw a monkey was watching us. Hey, that's not a very nice thing to say. You're right, I'm not very nice. 
I'm nicer than that dump you call a gym, though. I'm sorry, who are you? Eh, hey, why do you care? You're not gonna be around much longer anyway. What do you mean? My master buff bear is gonna wipe you and all your little friends out soon enough. You're all just a bunch of weaklings. Buff bear? You think buff bear can beat us? Ernie jumped at the monkey and they started to fight. Yeah, get him, Ernie. The monkey and Ernie were pretty evenly matched, but I believed in Ernie. Just then, someone else came running into the fight. It was the buff bear. Ernie, watch out. Ernie was outnumbered. I had to help. Hehe. <laughs> More Balboa students for me to destroy. You guys are pathetic. We were holding on. Buff Bear was strong. I was starting to get worried about Ernie. Stop this at once. Master Balboa had arrived. He seemed to catch us all off guard as everyone stopped fighting. Balboa, crawled out of your shell to train some more weaklings, I see. Bear, your strength is your weakness. <laughs> are you two really listening to this old fool? Don't insult him. You're a real jerk. I challenge you to a fight. Ernie, no. Yeah, I'll fight you, little guy. Looks like you better go with your babysitter. You know where to find me. Master Balboa then pulled us away as Buff Bear and his monkey henchmen left. Ernie, I told you your anger could be your downfall. Master Balboa, I've been training so hard. I know I can beat him. Master Balboa didn't seem so sure, but didn't say anything else. If you're gonna go through with this, you'll need all the help you can get. I'll do what I can to help you prepare. On days 11 to 12, I decided to continue doing some upgrades to the gym. Ernie was going to need every advantage, so I made sure to give the gym the improvements it needed to give him the edge. It's going to take more than a nice gym to win this fight, so we better get some upgraded gear. I took off and soon found myself in a forest. I headed into a nearby cave and quickly found some iron. Just what I was looking for. I had collected the iron I needed when suddenly I was attacked by a sunbird. What the? Where did you come from? I tried to hit him, but he was too tough. My health was starting to drain though, so I had to get out of there. I ran off. How could I beat him? Then I had an idea. I climbed up to get higher than the sunbird, then jumped off. Heads up! By doing this, I was able to land the final blow. That's when I saw he had dropped some items. Oh, nice! These will be perfect for the base. You saved me! Confused, I turned and saw Platypus was talking to me. That sunbird wouldn't leave me alone. Well, he'll leave you alone now, but it is pretty dangerous out here. Do you have a safe place to stay? Oh, not really. I'm all alone out here. Well, why don't you come live in my training gym with me? Oh, I've always wanted to be stronger. That sounds great. We headed off for the gym. We soon arrived, and I had a chat with Master Balboa. Zozo, I'm not running a charity here. You can't just invite anyone you meet to live here. But he was all alone. I can build him his own place. He won't be a bother. I'm sure of it. Hmm. Well, these are dangerous times. Very well. I quickly got to work, putting together a room for the platypus, whose name was Perry. I wasn't sure how much training Master Balboa was going to let him do, but in any case, he would have a place to stay. I also took some time to build myself a crafting area. Once my crafting area was set up, I smelted all the iron I had gathered. With all the iron smelted, I then took all of the iron ingots and used them to make myself a fancy new set of iron tools. I also used them to make myself some iron armor. The iron armor is still a little big for me though, so I'll save it for later. On days 13 to 15, I woke up to a strange noise. We were being attacked by a gang of monkeys. Buff bears cronies, we've got to stop. Them. I jumped into the battle, hitting as many monkeys as I could. I couldn't believe Buff Bear would send a hit squad like this. I was taking some of them out, but they just kept coming. Suddenly, Buff Bear entered, and the fight was really on. Ernie and Master Balboa tried to fight him off, but it looked like they were in real trouble. Then, out of nowhere, I was trapped in a cage. All I could do was watch as Buff Bear attacked my friends. Master Balboa took a hard hit. Ernie was now in danger. This looked like the end for him. No! Oh, wait, it was just a dream. Thank goodness. I was still feeling nervous about it though, so I went to talk to Ernie. I told him about my dream and that I didn't think it'd be a good idea for him to go through with the fight. Ernie just laughed it off, saying I was being paranoid. He was sure he could win the fight. I hope so, but keep an eye out for any funny business. On days 16 to 19, I woke up and saw that Master Balboa and Ernie were already hard at work training. Whoops, Master Balboa isn't going to like that I slept in again. I was still feeling a little nervous about Ernie's fight though, so I went to talk to him about it. He told me that I needed to stop worrying. That's when Master Balboa started to talk to me. Zozo, enough jibber jabber. You already slept too late. It's time to train. Yeah, sorry. I had a pretty bad dream. What's on the schedule for today? Master Balboa led us over to a corner of the gym. There's a spider infestation down there that I don't want to deal with. The two of you can get down there and clean it up. There's more equipment on the way and we need space for it. Oh man. All right, we're on it. Ernie and I broke all the boards as well as the spider webs. Master Balboa was right. It was a mess down here. We got right to work destroying all of the spiders in our way. I wondered how long they had been down here. I really hope Master Balboa knows what he's doing. This is nasty. Soon enough, the spiders were all cleared out. We then got to work patching up all of the broken sections. This place was in rough shape, but we were sure we could get it looking nice in no time. As we finished, Master Balboa came down to meet us. Zozo, there's a delivery waiting for us. 
go ahead and bring everything down. I ran upstairs and greeted the delivery man. He handed me the boxes of equipment and I took everything downstairs. Inside of the boxes was a bunch of exercise equipment. Well boys, hop to it. Ernie and I unloaded all of the equipment and got everything set up. There were a lot of good areas to train in now, just in time too, because Master Balboa was ready for us. Time to hit the equipment. Ernie and I ran around the gym following Master Balboa's instructions. It was a lot of hard work, but Ernie had a big fight ahead and we really needed to push him to be his best. The new equipment was great too. I was definitely going to be sore tomorrow. As we finished our workout, I could really feel my heart pumping. Suddenly, I grew into an even bigger kangaroo and gained more hearts. Whoa, I feel great. As we all celebrated my new strength, Perry came down the stairs. Wow, you've grown. I wanted to find you guys as I know something that might help. There are some powerful boxing gloves at a far off land that makes the user punch even harder than normal. It's just what we could use. Perry explained where we needed to go. I told Ernie to keep training and I would go find the gloves. On days 20 to 22, I headed out to go find the special gloves. Perry told me where to go, but mentioned it was very dangerous. As I got closer, I could see why. This outpost is crawling with desert raiders. This isn't going to be easy. I snuck my way up to the front door as a patrol of raiders walked by. Maybe I could sneak in. I moved further into the base, trying to hide behind things. I had gotten much bigger though, and that was harder to do. They soon spotted me and attacked. Looks like I'm gonna have to fight my way through this one. There were a lot of raiders, but with my new strength, it wasn't too much of a challenge to knock them out of the way. I had to be careful though, because if I got too cocky, they could easily overrun me with their numbers and take me down. Soon, I had fought my way to the top of the base. As I moved to take the power gloves, I heard a noise. A buff raider was looking at me and charged. Bring it on. This guy was no ordinary raider. He was stronger than the others and had a different weapon. As he hit me, I even caught on fire. Whoa, tone it down, big guy. The fire hurt, but I had to keep fighting. I couldn't let Ernie down. I kept on punching and hitting until finally I landed the final blow. The power gloves are all mine now. I walked up to the gloves and picked them up. They fit like a glove. As I left the base, another raider tried to attack me, but I punched him so hard he went flying. The other guy simply turned and tried to run away. I've got the power now. As I arrived back at the base, I could see Ernie outside training. I could tell he was feeling a bit nervous. Hey Ernie, are you feeling nervous? I'm here to support you no matter what. There's no shame in calling it off. No. I can't call it off. I've been waiting for this my whole life. All right, if you say so. In any case, I have some good news. I got the power gloves. These should give you a serious leg up. I tossed the gloves over to him and he was super excited about it. I could tell this really raised his spirits. I was still nervous about him doing the fight, but there was no way I was going to change his mind. On days 23 to 26, it was time for the big fight. We all made our way to the arena and soon arrived. Ernie was in high spirits and we were feeling pretty good. Maybe he could win this thing after all. As we approached, the monkey from before stopped us. Hi, you chumps. Buff Bear wants to make this fight a little more interesting. Oh boy, what's that? This fight won't be to the death, just until someone gives up. If the emu here wins, which he won't, Master Bear will let any of the captured birds go. But if he loses, he'll be Master Bear's servant for life. There's something fishy about this, Ernie. I don't think it's a good idea. Tell your boss I'll take it, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the birds go free. The monkey chuckled and went to tell his boss. Later, Ernie had stepped into the ring, and we could hear something up above us. Huh? Buff Bear had hung cages all around the arena, cages that were filled with all of Ernie's friends. This guy was a sicko. An announcer stepped into the ring. Ladies Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another Rumble Fantastical! In the red corner, we have the powerful, the mighty, the undefeated, Buff Bear! The crowd went absolutely nuts with cheering. He was definitely going to have the home field advantage. And in the blue corner is an emu. The announcer walked off. You got this, Ernie. Make us proud, son. There was a ding, and the fight was on. Ernie and Buff Bear jumped at each other. They were both landing some heavy hits. Come on, Ernie, show him who's boss. Ernie was swinging his hardest, and it looked like he was actually winning. I bet Buff Bear wasn't expecting those power gloves. <laughs> What's wrong, Bear? Scared you finally met your end? Ew, I guess I'll start trying now. Buff Bear started hitting even harder than before. He wasn't bluffing. He had just been toying with Ernie. Ernie, watch out. Buff Bear was really landing blows now. All Ernie could do was try to defend, but it was no use. This fight wasn't going to last much longer. Okay, okay, I yield. You win. I'll be your servant. Please, I have enough servants. You think I'm not going to give my friends a good show? No, no, you, you made a deal. Oops, guess I lied. Ernie, watch out. Buff Bear swung his claws and destroyed Ernie for good. No! The crowd went wild as Buff Bear celebrated with them. Oh, let's get him! No, Zozo, I can't lose you too. Quick, grab the gloves and let's get out of here. I jumped into the arena and collected the power gloves. Master Balboa and I got out of there as fast as we could. On days 27 to 31, we had made it back to the gym. I couldn't believe Ernie was gone. We had only known each other for a short time, but it felt like we had become brothers. I went outside and saw Master Balboa looking off into the distance. We'll get our revenge on Buff Bear. I know it. Master Balboa sighed. Zozo, 
It is impossible. I can't keep letting this cycle repeat itself. Ernie said the same thing to me when our last student was defeated, and that student said the same thing when we lost the one before. I am a failure as a teacher. I should just close up the gym and be done. No, you can't do that. I've learned so much from you, and I know I have much more to learn. If you're gone, it will be like I've lost everyone. Master Balboa thought about it for a moment. Fine, we can continue. But you must promise you won't challenge that bear. Training is for the strengthening of the self, not the domination of others. I smiled. He was back to himself. I promised to train for my own betterment, not for the destruction of others. I meant what I said, but there was something inside of me that was telling me I needed to avenge Ernie. I didn't feel like I needed to mention that to Master Balboa, though, so I changed the subject. I think we should do something to honor Ernie, and I know just what to do. Using some of the supplies from the gym, I got to work building a statue. I had a special idea in mind, and I think you'll like it when I'm done. It wasn't too much longer, and the first part of the statue was complete. On days 32 to 35, I went to have a chat with Perry. Even if we weren't going to challenge the buff bear and his monkeys, we needed to be strong enough to defend ourselves. Perry said he was ready to begin training, and I decided it would be good to go and try to recruit more animals. I headed out into the land, and soon came across an abandoned farm. I didn't see anyone, so I decided to go ahead and grab some of the nearby crops. As I was finishing up, I heard a cry in the distance. What was that? The sound got closer. That's when I saw a baby pig was under attack by a group of cougars. Help me, help me! I charged in, punching the cougars. Leave him alone! The cougars must have been so hungry, they didn't even pay attention to me. The poor little piggy was really in trouble. I took a few swings, and soon, all of the cougars were gone. Hey there, buddy. Are you okay? Yes, but no. This was my family's farm. My family was captured and taken away by the henchmen of Buff Bear. I was next. Thank goodness you came along. Happy to help, but it's not safe out here. Please, come stay at my gym with me and my friends. You'll be much safer there. Pig was thrilled at this idea. Oh, and his name was Wilbur. On days 36 to 39, Wilbur and I had arrived back at the base. I brought him inside and introduced him to Perry, who was hard at work training on a dummy. Perry, I'd like you to meet Wilbur. He's going to be staying with us, and I thought he'd make for a great training partner. Perry and Wilbur started chatting and hit it off right away. Then they ran off to go do some training. While they were doing that, I decided to go outside and work on the farm. Using the crops I had collected, I planted everything to give us a nice food supply. With the farm set up, I then got right to work, building Wilbur his own room. The poor guy was missing his family, but at least we could give him a home here in the meantime. Once the room was complete, I had back to the ring to guide Perry and Wilbur in a practice fight. The two of them weren't very strong yet, but we would get them there. Master Balboa came over. Ah, and who do we have here? I introduced Wilbur to Master Balboa, who seemed happy to see him there. He didn't seem to be quite as strict as he was when I first arrived. But remember, the things you learn here are for your defense only, not for attacking others. Speaking of which, I have something to share with you, Zozo. What is it? If we are to be prepared for an attack, we must have every advantage available to us. There is a powerful defensive item that you need to find. Master Balboa then explained the direction I needed to go. He wasn't sure of its exact location, but another animal in the area may have heard of it. I set off right away. On days 40 to 43, I was still traveling across the land toward the special item. Off in the distance, I could see a watering hole. Oh, perfect, I could use a drink. As I got closer though, I was stopped by a gazelle. Hang on, you can't go over there. Why not? Don't you see that lion? He attacks anyone who tries to drink. He's a real jerk. A real jerk, huh? I've got a thing for getting rid of jerks. Well, if you can get rid of them, I'll give you something good. Sounds like a deal. Hang on a second. I hopped over to the lion. Without a word, he attacked. Wow, they weren't joking. You are a jerk. This guy was tough, but he had no training. His fighting style was messy, and he just tried to swing mindlessly at me. I bobbed and weaved, landing blows. He still got some hits in, but in the end, I managed to take him out. You did it. Wow, that was really impressive. Here, take this. The gazelle tossed out a specialized pickaxe. As I looked closer, I could see it was enchanted with efficiency and fortune. Whoa, this is a massive help. Thank you. I ran off and soon found a cave. I had to put this thing to use right away. As I explored the cave, I soon found what I was looking for. Diamonds. The perfect thing at a time like this. I'm going to be able to upgrade all of my gear. My pockets were soon full of diamonds, and I headed out to keep looking for the special item. On days 54 to 49, I was finishing up my diamond mining. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. What the heck is that? A giant two-legged monster was looking at me. It attacked! I had never seen a monster like this before, but it was really powerful. I was starting to get worried because my health was really dropping. It doesn't look like I'm gonna make it. Just then, a colorful warrior came stepping in and finished it off. Whoa, you're super strong. Where did you come from? Technically, I came from 1,000 years ago. Whoa, are you some kind of time traveler? No, not exactly. 
In my lifetime, I was cursed by some evil witches, and now I can't rest until I've defeated the ancient ghost warrior. Ghost warrior? That sounds spooky. What is that, and where do you find one? Follow me. I took off after the ancient warrior, and we soon arrived at an old temple. As we got closer, I could see there was some kind of magical force field blocking our way in. The ancient warrior explained that in order to bring down the shield, we'd have to defeat three nearby ghost shamans. I have come here many times, but I'm not strong enough on my own. If I could get your help, there would be something in it for you, too. Inside of this temple is a powerful defensive item that can only be used by the living. That sounds like the item I've been searching for. I'm in. On days 50 to 53, the warrior and I soon saw the fire tower looming in the distance. On top, the fire ghost shaman was waiting. We charged up the tower, fighting blazes along the way. Out of the way, hotheads. The warrior was really impressed with my skills. We soon reached the top. The fire ghost shaman took one look at us, then attacked. We had an intense battle while he set off explosions around us. It was hard to believe that there were two more of these guys. With the combined power of the warrior and me, though, we managed to finally defeat him. After he disappeared, we noticed that he had dropped a key. Oh, we can use this to unlock the barrier. Two more to go. Sometime later, we arrived at the ice tower. It was a huge ice spike protruding out of an icy wasteland. It was quite the sight to behold. Let's get to it. This time, the tower was covered in skeletal warriors. They were vicious in their attacks, and at times, I was scared they were going to knock me off the tower. We got lucky, though, and managed to make it to the top. Problem was, there was no one there. Where is he? Do you think someone defeated him already? Without warning, some ice in the wall broke, and the ice shaman came charging out. Quite the entrance there, sir. The ice shaman put up a big fight. As we battled, he shot ice spikes up from the ground, which were really scary. A hit from those would do some serious damage. We were tough, though, and managed to take him out. He, too, dropped a key, which we picked up. Later, we arrived at the final tower, the Storm Tower. It, too, was an impressive sight, towering over the surrounding land. We didn't have time to be impressed, though. We had a key to collect. We charged up the tower, racing to the top. Protecting the tower was a small army of lightning allays. They would shriek as they flew in, trying to hit us. These guys are freaking me out. It took a lot of effort, but at long last, we had almost reached the top. There was just one problem. Looks like we've got some jumping to do. Hopefully, we don't fall off. The platforms had been covered in water and were a little slick, but we were doing okay. That's when a small storm cloud opened up and started shooting lightning at us. You can't be serious. We kept hopping across the platforms, doing our best to avoid the lightning strikes, which, as you can imagine, is not the easiest thing to do. Yet somehow, we managed to reach the top. There was a burst of lightning, and the storm shaman appeared, floating on a thundercloud. Let's show this prehistoric storm junkie who they're messing with. The shaman started to fight us, shooting lightning as he went. Come on, man, cool it with the lightning. He was quick, but not too quick. We hit him again and again, taking some hits of our own. It was a close battle but in the end, we were able to come out on top. And there's the last key. Yes. We picked it up. It was time to let our warrior rest. On days 54 to 57, we had returned to the temple. The warrior stepped forward and placed the keys in the elemental circle. As he did so, each key floated in place until at long last, the barrier was destroyed. We entered the temple and went up the stairs. As we reached the top, I could see the item floating on a table. The eye of the tiger. Yes. That must be it. We ran forward to grab it, but heard a strange noise stopping in our tracks. What was that? Suddenly, the ground broke and we fell down a long hole. Oof. Where are we? Who dares enter my tomb? Sitting in front of us on a throne was the ancient ghost warrior. He was dressed in a tiger skin. There was no way I was going to get that item without defeating this guy. All right, Catman, let's dance. Ghost warrior charred. The battle was fierce and everyone was getting in some hard hit. The thing is though, we were winning. For an endless being, you are very tough. We landed a pretty heavy blow, which sent the ghost warrior running back to his throne. Feel the wrath of the elemental beings. Suddenly a small force field appeared and the three elemental shamans came running through the portals. These guys again? We can do this. It was hard enough fighting these guys one-on-one, -on -one, but all three at once was a real challenge. Before, we had always outnumbered them, so this was a tough fight. Luckily, these reanimated warriors weren't as tough as the ones in the towers, as they didn't seem to be able to use their special attacks. Hang on, buddy. We can beat them. Slowly but surely, we were able to start taking them out. As one would fall, the force field would weaken, until finally, they were all gone. Oh, I will end this! The ghost warrior attacked us again, but it was clear we were too powerful. He tried his best, but soon, he was destroyed. Thank you for your help, Zozo. Please, go and claim the Eye of the Tiger. I will stay here and assume my final rest. You're a mighty warrior. Enjoy your afterlife. I ran up the stairs and grabbed the Eye of the Tiger off the pedestal. Huh, I don't know what exactly this does, but I guess I'll find out. As I went to exit the temple, I saw the warrior standing at the bottom of the temple steps. What are you doing here? I thought you were on your way to the afterlife. Well, I did too, but nothing happened. Did you get the item? I did, but I'm not sure what it does exactly. You will never leave this place. The ghost warrior had reappeared at the top of the stairs and came charging at me. He hit me super hard, but I immediately responded with an even stronger counterattack, knocking him out in one hit. Whoa, what was that? It was the item. It lets you deliver a powerful blow, but only if you take a powerful hit yourself. Interesting. Say, if you're not going to be disappearing anytime soon, why don't you join me on my quest? I've got nothing else to do. Sounds great. 
Awesome. By the way, what's your name? I bet it's something really cool and ancient sounding. Tim. Tim? Like short for Timothy? That is correct. Okay, well, that's still cool. Let's go. On days 58 to 62, Tim and I arrived back at the base. I headed straight to Master Balboa to tell him about the item I had found. That is most impressive, Zozo. I'm so happy that you made it back in one piece. <laughs> Master Balboa let out a cough. That didn't sound so good, but I didn't want to press him. He was also looking a little shaky. With Tim at the base, I needed to make sure he had a place to stay. I wasn't sure if undead, timeless ancient warriors needed to sleep or not, but I did my best to make him a comfortable place. At the very least, he could just enjoy the feng shui. Tim then called me over to him and told me that his 1,000 years of life came with some training tips. Following his instructions, I made some improvements to the gym. These are really going to help us out. With Tim all set up, I then headed over to the crafting table to make use of all the diamonds I had found. It had been something of a miracle that I was able to win all the battles I did using subpar armor. Soon, I had everything upgraded and was ready for my next fight. On days 63 to 66, I decided to get some more work done on Ernie's statue. I had gotten a decent amount done when I heard a noise coming from the base. As I looked, I saw the base was under attack by the monkeys. And this time, it wasn't a dream. You scumbags, get back! I started to fight off the monkeys, taking a lot of them out. Buff Bear was strong, but his students weren't. He must not be a very good teacher. I then hurried and ran inside the gym, where there's a pack of monkeys attacking Master Balboa. Get away from him! Master Balboa was holding his own, but I could tell he was eventually going to be overrun. I helped fight off the monkeys until only the henchman monkey was left. Heh, <laughs> you may have defeated our little army, but as long as you keep training and getting more members of your gym, we'll keep giving you these little visits. Enough is enough. We will never give up. Tell your boss this is an official challenge. I challenge him to a fight to the death. <laughs> oh, okay, pal. Your funeral. The monkey turned and ran off. I ran over to Master Balboa. He wasn't looking so good. <coughs> Zozo, why did you do that? You promised me you wouldn't fight him promised I would only fight out of self-defense. They attacked us. Isn't that what I'm doing? Master Balboa let out a cough. He had been seriously injured. Uh, we don't, we don't have to worry about that right now. You need to rest up and heal your wounds. I'm sorry. I led him to his bed to rest. Things weren't looking good. On day 67 to 70, I got to work, building a medical area that would have all the things that could help Master Balboa to heal. I hoped he could pull through. When I was done, I went to check on him again, but things were not looking good. Zozo, I don't know how much time I have left, but I need to talk to you about this fight. Master Balboa, it's okay. Save your energy. I know what you're going to say. We don't have to talk about this now. We do, Zozo. I just want you to consider something. You can live your life in peace at this gym, restoring it and training the next generation of protectors. You don't have to throw your life away in the pursuit of revenge. Don't answer me now. Just promise you will think about it. I promised him I would think about it. While I thought about it, though, I decided to get to work repairing the gym. The monkeys had caused a lot of damage, and we needed to get things back in case they attacked again. Once the repairs were complete, I went around the outside of the gym, putting up a fence. A little extra security could make a big difference in the future. As I was finishing up the fence, Perry came over to talk to me. Hey, I've got some information you might find useful. I know where you can find that monkey. Oh, do you? Because I wouldn't mind having a little chat with him. There's a club nearby that he likes to hang out at. I'll tell you the way. Perry explained how to find the club, and I set off. If I decided not to fight Buff Bear, at the very least, I was going to take out his monkey. On day 71 to 74, I arrived outside the club Perry had told me about. There were some bouncers standing outside. Out of the way, boys, or I'll move you myself. The bouncers weren't interested in my threats, and we started to fight. How bold of them to think they were going to stop me. I was able to knock both of them out pretty quickly. As I stepped into the club, there was a shout, and a bunch of monkeys started to swarm me. Bring it on, you tree rats. Where's your leader? I smacked the monkeys left and right, sending them crashing into the tables and chairs. I wasn't in the mood for their sad attempts to take me out. I only had one thing on my mind. Revenge. Come on, where is he? I know he's hiding around here. More and more waves of monkeys came running out, but it didn't matter. I tossed them around like stuffed animals and took them out quickly. If they weren't going to show me where the henchman was hiding, I was just going to have to start destroying their club. I ran around the room, busting up the tables and chairs. I ran around, breaking everything I could. If he was going to come to my house and break my stuff, I had no problem going to his and doing the same. Surely this would draw the monkey henchman out. On day 75 to 78, a nearby door opened, and the henchman finally revealed himself. Hey, what's the big idea? I thought we told you where you could stick your little kangaroo paws. Did you really think you could come to our gym and not have anything happen in return? You said you wanted to fight Master Bear, not me. Turned out I had some room in my schedule. You and me, alone. Now, let's go. Sure, I can crush you myself. The henchman left forward, getting an early hit in, catching me off guard. He was stronger than I was expecting. What's wrong, Happy? Spending too much time hugging trees and drinking tea with your turtle grandpa? How is he, by the way? Hey, he's not doing too good. You're about to pay what you did to him. I landed a really hard hit, which I could tell really shook him up. Nah, nah, not like this. You won't beat me. Suddenly, a bunch of monkey guards came running into the room. You coward. Oh, 
always hiding behind others. You talk tough, but you're weak. If Buff Bear wasn't around to protect you, you'd have disappeared a long time ago. I managed to knock out the crowd of monkeys. The monkey henchman looked around, then took off running up a flight of stairs to the roof of the club. I chased him to the top. What are you so afraid of? I thought you were going to crush me. What are you doing at that turtle gym? How did you become so strong? It's called training. Maybe you should have tried it instead of running your mouth. The monkey henchman was cornered at the edge of the roof. Hey, come on now. I just wanted to rough that old turtle up a bit, you know? It's not a big deal. We're not so different, you know? We're both strong-willed. So what do you say? Let's call it a draw and I'll get Buff Bear to call the fight off. No. I punched him so hard he flew over the edge, disappearing into the night. I had no more time for slimy monkeys. As I ran down the stairs, I noticed there was a note on the monkey's desk. I picked it up and took a look. Do not worry about Zozo. Even if it comes to a fight between me and him, I have a man on the inside. We will poison Zozo before the fight and ensure my victory. This must be from Buff Bear, but a man on the inside? I'll have to keep an eye out. On day 79 to 84, I arrived back at the base. As I got closer, Perry came running out. Zozo, come quick. Master Balboa has been asking for you. I think this is the end. I hurried inside and saw Master Balboa was looking even worse than before. He looked like he didn't have much time left. Zozo, my end is near, but I needed to speak with you. I'm sorry, Master Balboa. I've been rash. I know I need to call off the fight. If that is your final wish, I will honor it. And finally, you understand. Huh? What do you mean? Zozo, I know you. And while I know you mean that when you say it, your desire for revenge will grow stronger with every attack Buff Bear launches. Even the strongest warrior can't run in two directions at once. Wait, do you mean to say you want me to fight him? I do. I've known this from the moment Ernie stepped into the ring with that bear. It was always your destiny to avenge Ernie and save this gym. But I needed you to understand that you cannot defeat the bear with a heart of rage. You've been preparing me this whole time, and I didn't even realize it. Thank you. I'm afraid someone here is trying to sabotage me though. I found a note from Buff Bear saying so. If a friend is going to cross you, they might have their own reasons why. Be patient and have compassion so you may learn why. Goodbye, Sozo. I will be with you. Master Baboa turned to his side and vanished. I couldn't believe he was gone. Suddenly, there were some blinking lights as experience poured in on me, leveling me up into an even bigger kangaroo with more hearts. Master Balboa's final gift. I won't let him down. As a show of my gratitude, I headed outside to do some work on the statue. There was something new I felt I should add. Now that Master Balboa was gone, it might not look like much, but soon enough, it will be something great. On days 85 to 89, I walked around the gym, visiting with each of the new friends I had made. Each of them had a piece of advice for me. Tim spoke of speed in the fight using fast movements to evade the enemy's attack in order to land my own. Perry showed me what he had learned about his tail and shared with me a secret he had discovered that allowed him to hit twice as hard with it. Wilbur spoke to me about the power of perseverance. Sometimes things get hard in the fight, but by keeping your head down and continuing to fight, you will always make it through. As Wilbur was explaining, Perry came over. He had a note from Buff Bear. Greetings, Zozo. I accept your challenge and I will meet you in the arena in a few days. Best to get ready soon. As I read the note, I noticed Wilbur was acting a little funny. I'd have to keep an eye on him over the next few days. On day Days 90 to 94, I woke up and decided it was time to make my final preparations. I felt more powered up than ever, but there was still more that needed to be done. There was no way I could let Buff Bear take me out. First things first, I've got to upgrade my armor. The strongest armor comes from netherite, so I needed to head into the nether. I set out to find obsidian. I had ventured deep into a cave where there was lava and was able to collect all the obsidian I needed. Using my newly collected obsidian, I then set up a portal outside and lit it. Going to the nether always makes me nervous, but here we go. I stepped into the portal and the purple haze took me away. Safely in the nether, I got right to work, looking for ancient debris. Unfortunately, this wasn't going to be an easy trip, and I was soon fighting my way through. Out of the way! I fought as hard as I could, and managed to clear a path. I had to hurry, though. There was always something hiding around the corner. After plenty of searching, I managed to get all of the ancient debris that I needed. I also grabbed some gold. This will help me make netherite ingots, but I can also use it to finish the statue. Once I had collected everything, I headed back to the portal. On days 95 to 97, I arrived back in the overworld and made my way back to the gym. Using the ancient debris, I was able to smelt it down into netherite scraps. Then using the netherite scraps and gold, I made some netherite ingots. Now I can get truly powered up. I took all of the diamond armor and gear I had collected and upgraded everything to netherite. I had no idea what Buff Bear was going to show up with, so I had to have the best. After that, I headed outside to finish the statue. Using all of the supplies I had collected, I was finally able to give it the final touches. As I'm sure you figured out by now, it was a trophy of my two friends, Ernie and Master Balboa. As I finished the statue and admired my work, I suddenly had a vision. Zozo, it's me, Ernie. Ernie? I can't believe it. You're back! Well, no, I'm just here, in your head. But I wanted to say thank you for working so hard to avenge me. Yes, Zozo, we won't see you there, but we will be supporting you. We know you can win. Thanks, guys. I was starting to feel a bit lonely, but I feel much better now, especially since someone is going to try and poison me. Zozo, remember, 
They may have their reasons, so meet them with compassion, not anger. I nodded as the two of them vanished away. I'll do whatever it takes to win. On day 98, I woke up to the sound of a knock at my door. It was Wilbur. Uh, hello, Zozo. I uh, thought you could use a pick-me-up before your fight. I made this for you. Wilbur seemed really nervous as he passed the drink over to me. As I took a closer look at the drink, I could very clearly see that it had poison in it. It was labeled. Before I could say anything, though, Wilbur piped up. Zozo, wait. Don't drink that. It's poisoned. Yeah, I saw that. Wilbur, what's going on? I'm sorry for trying to poison you. Buff Bear is blackmailing me. He knows something about me and threatened to tell everyone if I didn't help him. What do you mean? What could be so bad that you would poison your friend? The truth is that I... I love clean water. Bathing in mud is so gross. But if anyone found out, especially the other pigs, I would be ridiculed until the day I become a pork chop. Please don't tell anyone. And please forgive me. The advice of Master Balboa repeated in my head. It's okay, Wilbur. I forgive you. And don't worry. If anyone ever gives you a problem about liking clean water, you just let me know. I've got two fists that will have a word with them. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. I decided that I would even do him one better and got to work building him his own special hot tub. I wanted him to know that he would never get made fun of here. Once the work was completed, I gathered everyone together for one final chat. They were all so excited for me and began to give me words of encouragement. I didn't know what I had done to have so many great friends. As their encouragement grew, I suddenly started to as well. Out of nowhere, I became a big buff kangaroo. Let's go kick some buff bear butt. And don't forget to hit subscribe. I can't do this without your help. On day 99, we made our way to the arena. The day of the fight had come. As I entered, I could see not much had changed from before. Buff bear and I stepped into the ring for our introductions. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the latest rumble in the rotunda! In the red corner, we have the mighty, the majestic, the powerful, the one, the only, Buff Bear! The monkeys in the crowd went wild in admiration. And in the blue corner, a kangaroo. Buff Bear and I were facing each other. He had a sly grin. <laughs> Hope you're not feeling a little under the weather today. You mean like poisoned? I feel great, actually. Turns out your friend is actually my friend. What? That useless pig. After I beat you, he's dead. Keep dreaming. We got ready for the bell. Buff Bear was going down. As the bell rang, we both leapt into action. I had been preparing for this moment for so long, I just had to win. Even then, he was still incredibly strong. Silly kangaroo. You've wasted your time at that old decrepit gym. You should be putting your talents to use as my servant. I'll never be your servant. And you're going to pay for what you've done to Ernie and to Master Balboa. We continued to exchange blows as the monkeys around us were going crazy. I had to be careful. One slip up and he was going to be able to knock me out. I felt like I was winning and was getting some good hits in. Looks like your time is coming to an end. Huh, guess I'll stop playing around then. Oh no, it was his fight with Ernie all over again. I was in trouble. He started to really hit me and my health was really starting to drop. Just then, I heard a voice in my head. Master Balboa. Focus, Zozo, and use the eye of the tiger. Of course, the best offense was a good defense. I lowered my guard, letting myself take the full impact of Buff Bear's hit. As I did so, the eye of the tiger let me absorb the blow sending Buff Bear out of the ring and into the afterlife. I did it! The monkeys were stunned. They couldn't believe it, but I could. Justice had been served. On day 100, I was back at the gym, right where I belonged. With Buff Bear defeated, we could train and grow in peace. The world had become just a little bit safer, but we had to be ready, always.